Okay. So it doesn't want to start. Uh, it just clicks. He said uh, from the previous owner when he was here that if you spin the flywheel over a little bit and then it'll catch the starter. So I've got my massive Dominator um, pry bar that one of my Patreon members sent me. Just stick it right here. Turn the flywheel a little bit. Now we'll go see if it starts. Boy, it is low on compression. It's 90 degrees outside today. That didn't even think about firing, so I gotta go round up some starting fluid, which I don't have with me here on the cart. Um, so let me go find that. that. That motor's definitely tired. Okay. Give it a shot, make sure yeah, the emergency flapper is good. Oh, let's see how it does now. Well, now we got no battery. That sucks. Um, I think that starter might be sticking on because after I let go of the starter button, then it went uh, another little bit. We just don't have enough cranking amps right now to to get it going. So I'm gonna have to get power down here. I, uh, I only ran 220 down here at 50 amp. I didn't run anything else. So I'm gonna have to come up with an adapter to hook up my regular battery charger down here. Well, it sat here for a week. The left side airbags are still up. The right side is down. Uh, I believe the front is still up too, actually. It's hard to tell. Yeah, the front's up because the front on the other side's up. Um, the front is both together at once. If one rear side leans, then it, it makes it lean to the front no matter what. But uh... Okay, I was able to get my extension cord to reach over here so I could hook up the 50 amp to it, and then I'm going to hook up this battery charger as soon as I find out where there's an outlet. Maybe there's one up there. No, that's the cover. Turn it. Would have been nice if there was one right there, huh? All right, keep looking. Okay, so I just have this little charger. I'll just leave it on all night. It's a 15 amp charger. So the batteries are at 49%, so we'll let them charge up. That's how loose that flywheel is. All right, well, it's been on the charger for about an hour. Let's see if we can get it started here. It's gonna rain, I'd love to get it moved over to the pad.
Monty, huh? <laughs> That's a pretty tired ending. Of course, it's getting ready to rain. raining. So there was something going on with his starter. I heard that solenoid clicking on and off. It wasn't making contact the whole time. I couldn't hear that from up front, but on the video I could hear it. So I have to look and make sure all the connections are tight on the starter. That could be what the issue is back there. Um, it's down a cylinder for sure. Uh, I can tell by the way it's vibrating that it's not firing on one of the cylinders. Uh, it's definitely a weak engine though to not to not start if it was just down a cylinder it still should have popped right off at 90 degrees outside uh, but it, it it i remember last time when we were there we had to use starting fluid down at two and he said he always has to use starting fluid so uh, that's just a sign of a really weak motor i mean it could be a head issue you know all the valves are bad on it but more likely than not it's, it's all compression which I, a compression test isn't going to tell me if it's, if it's the valves or not uh, so i just a an in-frame rebuild is really what i just recommend to do on that i know nobody likes to talk about the the pooey side of RV stuff, but uh, we had a, uh, what they call a poo pyramid, uh, the bottom of the toilet, you know, because it's a straight down shot, you kind of get a pile of stuff there, and uh, it ended up plugging up, backing up the pipe inside, where the black tank wasn't full, but it was just kind of sealed off by what had happened underneath of the toilet. But uh, I used this thing here, uh, it's a big long stick with a high pressure nozzle on the end, and you stick it down there and turn the water on, uh, make sure it's all the way down in the tank and it really blasted everything away and cleared it out. Um, 
you don't usually have this problem when you're driving on the road with your RV because the tank sloshes around, but when you're parked in one spot for a while, uh, we've actually had it twice here since we've been on the property. We've never had it the previous, you know, five years ever. So, uh, but this really got in there and cleaned it out nice. It's got, a, it's nice and long. It's got an on off switch on it. Uh, and it's pretty high pressure, uh, the way that nozzle comes out. So it worked real well. Definitely something I recommend if you have an RV, uh, just because it's going to save you a lot of headache and do it pretty cleanly where you don't really make a mess with anything. And uh, I thought it was a great device. And then I've always used this dual flush pro valve. Um, I just got another one because my old one was leaking water at the, the nozzle here. So clean water would spray out when the water was on, um, but it would make a mess in the bay. But uh, it's nice because you can see what's coming out. You can see if it's plugged. You can see how nasty the water is or whatever. So you can tell when it's clean. Plus you can close the valve on it and backfill the tank with water and then give it a good flush with just clean water, which is what I'm doing right now. I have the valve closed. The, back, the black tank is backfilling with clean water and then I'll do a real good high pressure flush on here just a minute here and just rinse it out real, real well. This thing also rinses out your hose so you get all the nastiness out of your hose before you put it away. Here's the package that it came in. So I'll put a post, uh, like an Amazon link to it, but it did work really well. 